Today, you'll learn how to set up your own free private email server. So I'm going to set up alex at ideaspot.site, but you can set up your own custom name, custom domain, at whatever you like. So I'll show you how to do this. We're going to use a free panel called Cyber Panel. I've covered this on the channel plenty of times before for running a web server. It's a very fast web server, but it can also be used for email. So I'm going to set this up today. Emails go through just fine. I'm testing it from my custom email here, my custom email is landing in Gmail in the primary inbox. No problem with spam, no problem with landing in promotions. It all works really well, passes all the spam security checks in Gmail just fine as well. So this is really a very nice way of doing things. It's worth mentioning that in the test, I'm going to use the default uh, webmail client that comes with CyberPanel. It's RainLoop. It's fine. It's very simple to use, but you can actually use the settings that are provided in CyberPanel with any mail client. So you've got POP3 and IMAP settings. You can set up whichever uh, email client you prefer to use. So you're not uh, restricted to just using the webmail on here. You can also use SMTP on here. So if you're running a web application that needs to send emails, a lot of us watching the channel like to use WordPress to send WooCommerce transactions or email subscriptions you can use SMTP it all goes through securely on port 587 as well so works very well very useful so all this is going to be covered so if all this sounds interesting keep watching make sure you watch this one right to the end I'm Alex from Ideaspot let's get started so I'm going to do this from scratch we'll start with making a new cyber panel server so I'm using Vulture to set up the server you can use pretty much any VPS but uh, my preference is Vulture um, all we have to do here is set one up. I'm in my Vulture dashboard here. Um, if you'd like to join Vulture, I've got a link in the description. You get 30 days free, so you can try it out following these exact steps. So high frequency server. I like to go with uh, New York for my server. Most of my viewers are in North America, so I like this one. Um, and then we can go with the server type here. We can go with marketplace apps. They actually have a one click cyber panel here. We can just use that to install cyber panel. You can also do it from the command line like I've done in other tutorials. I'll put a link to a tutorial in the description where I do it from a command line, but this is a one click installer, which speeds it up a little bit. So let's use that one here and we'll go with the cheapest one, $6 a month and SSH keys. Let's add an SSH key for login here. So let's go ahead and add one here. So I might just call this one idea spot. And let's go ahead and paste one in. So if you don't have an SSH key, you can use whatever SSH software you'd like. I'm going to use Putty for this demonstration here. You can download it at putty.org if you'd like to use it as well. But I'll go ahead and generate a key with Putty. So let's load up Putty and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So Putty comes with a few different apps here. So Putty Gen is the one we're going to use to generate our key. We go ahead and click generate, wiggle the mouse around in the blank space to generate some random data. That'll give us our key. Now we're going to save our private key. You can add a password if you like, if you're on a shared computer, but if it's a private computer, you don't have to add a password. I'll call my private key idea spot for this demo. Go ahead and click save. Let's save the public key as well. Um, idea spot pub as well. Let's do that. And then we can go ahead and paste this in as well. So I'm going to copy this and we can actually paste this over in our VPS. So back in our server setup, we're going to paste in our SSH. Can you make sure you paste in all of that text that putty gen gave us so make sure you get that just right add that ssh key on here so that's added our ssh key on again i've got to click cyber panel again make sure that's ticked and six dollars it looks like we've got to do all these things again for some reason but anyway um we've got our ssh key on here i've selected that one and i'm going to call this host name idea spot that seems good and we can click deploy so now we'll see our server is status installing. So we just have to be patient while Cyber Panel installs itself and then we can go ahead and log in. Cool, so that is all up and running now. We can go ahead and connect to this IP address. We can click that and copy that IP address to our clipboard. So to connect, I'm gonna use that one called Putty and I'm going to connect to that IP address here. I'm gonna save this as um, Vulture Demo and just put, save that on there. We'll need to use the SSH key to do that. So let's go ahead and click auth there under SSH auth. We're gonna have to browse for that key that we saved earlier. So I'll just click browse and grab that key that we're using. And then we go back and save this under session and save that on there. We can open up here. We can connect to our server, click yes there. I'm gonna log in as root. Here we go. There we go. So um, do you wish to update? Click, uh, type Y for yes, capital Y and enter. It'll run the updates. There we go. Great, so we're logged in as root. Now, the best thing to do here is 
set a new admin password for the web admin. You can also get the password um, by typing that in, but the best thing to do is admin pass, put in a nice strong password, hit enter, it'll say admin password successfully changed. So now we can go ahead and log into cyber panel through this login here. So let's go ahead and do that. Paste that in here. So we'll get an SSL warning. We can go through to our cyber panel dashboard now. We'll get and log in here. We'll use that password that we just set and the username is admin. We can go ahead and sign in. All right, so we can go ahead and start setting up our email server now. So let's go to websites. We're gonna create a website. So we just need to fill in this form. So package is default, owner is admin, domain name. For this demonstration, I'm gonna use ideaspot.site for this demonstration put an email address in there. PHP 7.4 is what we're gonna to use today. Now, the only additional feature you really need here is DKIM support. Um, we can go ahead and add SSL on, on the host and base their protection. May as well do that while we're here. Go ahead and create a website, but um, DKIM, it'll work just fine just from that. But let's go ahead and wait for this to get created. If we wanna run a website on here later anyway, we'll have the SSL set up already. So I think it's may as well tick it at that point. But this is successfully installed. We can go back. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna point our um, ideaspot.site domain over to this IP address. So let's go ahead and do that. So this step's gonna depend on where you bought your domain from. I got this from namecheap.com, but every other domain um, management is pretty similar. We just have to use our DNS management and point our um, domain over to that server. So uh, to do this in Namecheap, we're gonna use Namecheap basic DNS. We're in our domain here, and then we go to advanced DNS. And we're gonna start adding some records. So the records we need to add, we get to them by going to DNS in cyber panel and add and delete records. That'll take us to here. These are the records we're gonna start adding over to our Namecheap or whichever DNS management we're using. So the first one is an A record. We're gonna use um, ideaspot.site and we're gonna point it to that IP address. So that is just a matter of going add a new record, A record, and the host is at IP address is that. And we click that. And the next one is for mail. So we go add a new record, A record, host is mail, and the IP address is the IP address. Sweet, so that's all the A records that we need. Now let's move on to C name records. So here we're gonna use www to ideaspot site. We're not gonna use an FTP server on this at any point, I don't think so. Um, let's go ahead and just add the www on here. So C name record, www, target is ideaspot site. And that looks all good. And then we're gonna do MX records. So MX records are the next ones we do here. So under MX, we've got idea spot site goes to mail idea spot site with a priority of 10. So let's go ahead and do that. So in Namecheap, this is separate. You might actually have MX records in your list, depending on where you're doing this, but um, on Namecheap, there is mail settings here. So custom MX is what you use on Namecheap. And then uh, the host is at and the mail server is uh, mail idea spot site. And priority was 10. And we click save. Alrighty, so that looks all good. Host is at mail idea spot site. Now we've just got a few more text records to add in here. So let's go back, click text, and let's start with that first one. So that is at, and this is our SPF record. So let's copy that. Let's go ahead and add a text record. Host is at, there's our SPF and our IP address. So that's a really important one. Make sure you get that one right. That lets other servers know that this IP, this server is okay to send an email out. It's not spam. We are okay with this server sending email. And similar process for the rest of these text records. So we've got DMARC with the underscore at the front there. So let's go ahead and do that one. That's text. And the host was DMARC and the value was this. There we go. And the next one is the domain key. Oops. The value there was that. Cool. And the next one was our DKIM thing. So that is default domain key. there and the value is all of this there's actually quite a bit to paste there it doesn't show it all 
make sure you get all that. I press control A to get all that and paste all that in. So that's our public key for our mail server. That means that um, it confirms the identity of our mail server. That increases our trustworthiness on our server. So these are very important steps to get into your DNS records. Now, one thing to be sure of here, you'll notice that there's no quotation marks around that key. If you look on here, there's quotation marks on there. So this name sheet has automatically taken those out. Not all DNS managements do that. I've actually had trouble once when actually left those quotation marks in there. I think it might've been on Cloudflare. It didn't work. You'd make sure that those aren't actually in your DNS records, those quotation marks. But I think this is all the records we have to do. SPF um, isn't there. SPF was actually under text. That was our SPS record. So I think we're all good. We can go ahead and uh, start sending email nearly. One other thing that's important to do is our settings in Vulture, you can set up reverse DNS. So we can set up the reverse DNS. Right now it's pointing to vulture.com. We want to set that to ideaspot.site. So let's go ahead and do that. Now it's going to be different depending on where you're hosting your server, um, but it's going to be in your network settings under reverse DNS. So um, Contabo or Hetzner, DigitalOcean, Linode, they'll all have their own way of doing that, but this is how you do it on Vulture. So you'll need at least one of your own domains in there, and then you'll need, um, for that domain, you'll need a text record with the SPF, with the IP that matches as well. So um, then it'll all work, um, all your SPF tests will validate, and it can look up that in reverse as well. So that's an extra layer of um, trustworthiness that adds to your config. So before we start trying to send email, it's worth just checking on what's my DNS.net Ideaspot site. MX is hitting the mail Ideaspot.site. That's resolving just fine. Let's test the A record here. This is all hitting the correct IP address. I think we're pretty much good to go. It looks like all those DNS uh, settings are live. The other thing you can do over mxtoolbox.com reverse lookup, you can put in the IP address and you can hit reverse lookup and just make sure that's hitting the domain that you set it to. So um, we wait a second here and it should be hitting the Ideaspot site. So that looks all good as well. One other thing that CyberPanel does support here is SSL for email. So we can actually set uh, mail server SSL here. So under SSL, mail server SSL, let's click that one, select our website there and go ahead and issue SSL. Now this does take a few seconds, so be patient while this works. So that's all good. Our mail server is set up. We might as well do this for our actual host name as well. So let's do hostname SSL and go ahead, select our website and issue SSL for the host name. All right, that's all done. So that looks good. We can actually access our cyber panel through our domain on port 8090 rather than through the IP address there. So let's may as well go ahead and do that. So let's make a new tab. So if I go over to ideaspot.site colon 8090, it'll take us to our cyber panel. We can log in with the same admin and password that we used earlier. Go ahead and log in. That'll take us to our panel. And now we're operating from our domain name rather than from just a plain IP address, which is a bit nicer. Let's go ahead. We can start creating an email address. So let's select our website, Ideaspot site. Now we can put a name in there. I'm going to put Alex at Ideaspot site for our address. Nice strong password in there and click create. So that looks all good. Alex Ideaspot successfully created. Now to actually send email, we can go to email and we can go to our access webmail. So this is an open source free front end for your webmail. So this is called Rainloop. Um, you can log in with your email address there and the password that we just set up. Go ahead and log in. So this looks all good. Let's head back to Cyber Panel now and under email, we can list emails and select our domain. And you may actually get this SSL warning here. We can click fix. I'm not sure what causes that, but just go ahead. It should automatically reconfigure the SSL so it works properly here. So we'll get our success messages there. That looks all good. Now these are your um, mail settings. You can use these on any mail client. So if you want to use um, Outlook or um, your mobile phone mail client or whatever you'd like, you can use uh, these server details along with the password we just set up. And you can check your email and other clients rather than using Rainloop. But let's use Rainloop for this test. Let's go ahead, set up a new message and test it out. So I'll just set up an email to test it out, um, to send it to myself at Gmail and let's go ahead and send it. Lovely. So this arrived very, very quickly in my Gmail in the primary inbox. So that was all good. No problem with going promotions or spam. If we go ahead and click on it, we can see our email there. And if we go ahead and show original, we can actually see it's past the DKM, it's past DMARC, it's past SPF. So all these spam tests, it's passing just fine. 
The other really good test to run is on mailtester.com. You can send an email to the address that they generate there. Copy that. Let's send an email to that address. So I'm going to send our test email to that test address. Go ahead and send it over. Now wait a minute or so to make sure it goes through, then check your score. So this is pretty good. It says your email is almost perfect. We've got eight out of 10. Um, there is one thing we can improve, and that is just because ideaspot.site doesn't like .site, doesn't like these um, new domain, top level domains. It likes traditional .com, .net, .edu, .org, um, not .site, not .space, not .xyz. Those ones, you lose two points. But um, if you were using a .com or, or a .net, for example, you get 10 out of 10 in this situation. So this is perfectly good. Um, and as we saw, it's working just fine in, in Gmail anyway. The other thing we can do is set up a website on here and um, just test that out, how that works as well. So websites, list websites, we've got idea spot site here. We can click manage. Uh, from here, what we should do is we've got SSL already on here. So that is all good. We can do rewrite rules. Let's add a rewrite rule to force HTTPS and save that on there. That's all good. We can put a website on here with WordPress pretty easily. So choose WordPress with Lightspeed Cache here. I'm going to call that Idea Spot. Um, that looks all good. So we've got email to log in, email for the admin, nice strong password there. Um, leave that part blank. Click install. This is going to install WordPress on here. So that takes a second, but that looks all good. So we can get into WordPress ideaspot.site slash WP dash admin. Go ahead and log in with our username and password that we just set up. So that's what I just used here. We can go ahead and log in. Lovely. Now let's head to plugins. Now we can go ahead and add new. I'm going to get an SMTP plugin here. So SMTP research here. And the one we want is this one here. So go ahead and install WP mail SMTP. This is the most popular one it has 2 million installs. We can activate that one. We don't need to do the wizard. We can go back to the dashboard. That's just a matter of going to here and putting in our um, custom SMTP here. So other SMTP here. There we go. Now we're just going to fill this stuff out here with our information from our email here, list emails, I think. So we're just going to fill this information out here with the details that we get under email and list email. So we need our SMTP server host name. So that's going to be mail idea spot site. We're going to use TLS and authentication is on. SMTP username is our email address. Let's pop that in there. Password is our email password. So that stuff all looks good. We're going to save that in. All looks good here. We can run email test and we can send it to, um, let's send it to, to Ideaspot class. Go ahead and send that test email. Got a success there. And over in Gmail, that SMTP worked just fine as well. So we've got free SMTP set up um, that we can use on websites or other apps on um, WordPress, for example, WooCommerce, whatever you like. All your transactional emails can be sent using your own mail server just fine here. So let's have a look at our um, details and it's passing all our checks. All our security checks are going through just fine as well. So that looks all good. I should also mention just quickly that replying is working just fine as well. I replied there and it showed up straight away in the inbox of my uh, service. So it's working quite well. Uh, this all works very nicely for SMTP and for your mailbox. So um, custom emails, you can have as many as you want. Basically, there's no limits and it's all free using Cyber Panel. So I was using Vulture to set this up. That worked really well and you can try it out for yourself on a 30 day trial. If you like, I'll put that link in the description. Um, I've seen this work quite well on Linode as well. I'll put a link for Linode there as well. Um, I've seen it work on Hetzner. Um, so yeah, uh, most servers, I think this will work just fine. If you're happy with installing CyberPanel, you can get this up and running. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.